group. It belongs to the people. Now, the misunderstanding that political power belongs to the gun started in 1966 when Oboto overthrew the Constitution. Those who are young may not know the history. We had a constitution agreed on in 1962. However, Obote overthrew this constitution in 1966. That's where our problem started. Then Obote tried to overthrow, to overthrow the system we had put in after me. Eventually, we kicked Amin out. Uh, we kicked uh, 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 Obote out. But for us, we used force, all right, but uh, in a different way. We used, uh, I, I, when I came here for the campaign, you remember I told you that sometimes you can start your fire to meet the fire from the bush and put it out. That's what we, we did with the, with the virus. We therefore, we therefore used the gun in order to end the rule of the gun. That's why last year we had elections, you remember? First, we had elections of the Constituent Assembly. We wrote a constitution. And uh, the, uh, under the new constitution, we held presidential and parliamentary elections, and soon we are going to hold local government elections. This means that, this means that we have now gone back to 1966 under the rule of the constitution, not of the gun. There is no need for anybody to use the gun anymore in order to gain power or to stay in power. All you should do is to go to the population when the time for election comes and you present your point of view. If they agree with your point of view, they elect you. If they don't, it doesn't matter. You go and uh, look after your cows or your goats. In Stote, use the gun. Uh, now, Obote is... Uh, now, suppose they, he, he had not used the gun. Suppose he had used the, uh, the elections uh, the, the following year. Even if Obote's point of view would have been defeated by Mutesa, this country would have been saved a lot of problems. And even, and even Obote himself personally would have gained. Instead of Obote taking that road, he took the road of unconstitutionalism. What is the consequence? So many people died in the process. So much infrastructure was destroyed. Uh, so much uh, uh, property was destroyed. So much development time was lost. And even for Obote personally, uh, Obote is now in exile in Lusaka. Amin, who tried to replace him, is in exile in Saudi Arabia. So many of their followers were killed. If we used the violence to overthrow constitutionalism, we would be defeated, we would fail. Our use of violence was to restore constitutionalism. Now, therefore, these fellows who have been causing you problems here, uh, they don't know one Lugubara, Lugubara word, which I like to tell them. The, to tell those who have survived all this re recent uh, wind which has swept these people. The Rukbar word is Izapi Teddy. Izapi, Izapi Teddy. Huh? Izapi Teddy. Izapi Teddy. <laughs> This Izapi Teddy means an egg which is not fertilized. <laughs> a, 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 an egg of a hen. Oh, uh, huh? No, it is first of all an egg, but it's not fertilized. 
Uh, now, when you look on the outside, you think it's an, it looks like an egg, because it's, it's like all other eggs. But this egg will never produce a chick. It will never produce a, ch a chick because it has no head of nucleus. The, the hen can sit on it for 21 days, like it sits on all the other eggs. The other eggs will produce chick, this one will not. Now, the NRM egg produced re results because it had a heritage nucleus. It was fighting for constitutionalism. <laughs> We were fighting for constitutionalism. Had we been fighting against the constitution, we would also have been Izapi Teddy. So these fellows who have been here in Kaya, in Bazi, in Mbokoro, killing people, have been doing nothing because their violence. And that's why they've been uh, 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 killing children, women, what? Why not constitutional soldiers if you want to fight? Because you know where the barracks is. Why do you kill children and women and kidnap people and cut off their ears? What sort of, that shows you that you are a zappy teddy. <laughs> if I want to overthrow the government, I, I know the address of the, everybody knows where the government is. It's not uh, women cutting off their ears, their leaves. This is all signs of Izapi Teddy. <laughs> now, since we we had uh, since this uh, these these groups had caused so much problem in the north of Uganda, then we we we, we thought of another Lugubara word. Uh, two, two other Lugubar words. These Lugubar words are Drire Onji. <laughs> now, now, Drire Onji is witchcraft, which you send to somebody who is causing you problems. <laughs> and the witchcraft causes him a lot of problems. <laughs> so the mothers of Uganda who have been losing their children, who have been losing their girls, who have been kidnapped and being taken to the Sudan and being married by force, People have been having their ears cut off by criminals, by praying to their spiritual ancestors and to God also through the bishop. All these tears have been able to generate very strong dire onji, which, which has swept all these bandits from Zaire through Sudan. Ah, they, I don't know where they are now. Those who are right. So that is the, this is the dire onji of the people of Uganda when they are disturbed. They cause you a lot of problems. Now, because of what has happened recently, there is going to be security, not only on the borders, but even on the roads. In fact, very soon, even this system of convoys through the, on the Karuma Road will be abolished because we are, we are going to finish any element who is remaining. <laughs> and this Drire uh, Onji did not only happen here in Western Nile, even in Acholi, I hear that it is happening. The same witchcraft has gone and disturbed those. <laughs> Uh, I was reading uh, the newspapers that uh, 
uh, the uh, Konyi, where he has been uh, basing himself at the press called Aru, it has been overrun by the same Dire Onji. <laughs> So, the Uganda is going to be peaceful. Some people, the supporters of the Izapi Teddy, have been going through you saying that, oh, there's going to be a war between Uganda and Sudan, and so on. So that's, that's what I hear. It will be very unwise for the Sudan government to start a war with us. Very unwise for them. Please, if you are their friend, advise them not to do so. <laughs> this is because uh, Khartoum is 1,000 miles from, from here, from the border. For us, we are very near here. We are here. So if somebody really starts to with us here in the south of Sudan, it will be to his big disadvantage. We would give him a blow from which he would never recover, I am sure. He's a PTD. Of here, are the ones who have been misleading the Arabs in Sudan. They go there and give the impression that Uganda is weak, that, that if, we give, or if you give us this and that, we shall go and overthrow uh, this government of Museveni and we put an Islamic government. Oh, my friend. <laughs> because we have got a very long experience of fighting. You, you know how long we have been fighting. <laughs> So please, what you should do, to, uh, how you, if you are a friend of the Arabs in the, Sudan, in the Sudan, the advice you should give them is that they should not dare interfere in the, in the affairs of Uganda. That would, would be very good advice, advice number one. And, and the second advice should be that they should make a peace settlement with their the black people of the South, because that, that is a permanent problem in the Sudan. Therefore, instead of, uh, you know, uh, Atamvaku and these little pharaohs here, that those are just putting those Arabs in, in problems. Let them have no problems with us, and let them peace, uh, let, let them make peace with the black people of the South of Sudan, because that's their land. It's not the land of Arabs. You all know that this land is the land of the Dinkas, of the Bari, of the Kakwas. Of, you know the, who owns this land. So if the Arabs want to live with them, they must live with them as equals, not as uh, subordinates. It is their land. It is not the land of Arabs. Who doesn't know this? The, the Arabs from Khartoum can only be, live with the southerners in the south here if they reach, if they live as equals. But if the Arabs say, our culture is superior to yours, you must become Arabs. Uh, that that uh, uh, fellows like these ones whom I see here, uh, that they are candidates to be Arabs. This is a very ambitious program. How do you turn all these black fellows into Arabs? Very big program. <laughs> oh, please, the, the, the people here do not, the, the, there are a few elements who always go to Bazi. We have got all the fires now. All the fires, all the, uh, the fellows who didn't die, we, we have them now, uh, all of them. Uh, so please, do not mislead those poor Arabs. There will be a lot of problems if they try to, to start a war with us. If they start a war with us, it will be their problem. No, not, it will be ours, but, also, but more theirs than ours. The president highly praised the people of Arua district for having exercised their birthright of voting for a candidate of their choice during the May 1996 presidential election. He, however, advised them now that there is now an elected president of all Ugandans. So they should take stock of Uganda politics and join him and his movement government and let bygone be bygone. Now, coming to my program, you remember the, the children said, were saying that uh, the people here did not vote for me, uh, but it didn't matter. 
this, this was the whole purpose of elections. That, this is the whole purpose of democracy, that you vote for the one you, you prefer, but if the one you prefer does not win, you support the one who wins. So <laughs> there's really no problem at all. If the people here did not vote for me, it doesn't matter. The, the, it was uh, uh, now. If you go to a dining to to a hotel, there is a menu: uh, bananas and meat, bananas and uh, ground nut sauce, uh, potatoes. Now, if you eat pot if you choose to eat potatoes, will the bananas come and beat you? Say, Why didn't you eat me? <laughs> Then, then people will run out of hotels. We, we shall be fearing to go to hotels because of fearing you not to choose bananas. Elections are like the menu in a hotel. You choose what your stomach prefers. But you also respect your neighbor who is eating what your stomach does not prefer. <laughs> Then there will be complete harmony in the hotel. Uh, so there is absolutely no problem for the, the fact that I got a small percentage of votes in this area. Is, is, that's what we fought for. That's why we were fighting all this time in order to bring this about, for the people to choose what the way they like. Some people were saying that because some areas did not vote for Museveni and Museveni won, Museveni would not work for, would not, for those areas. Then Museveni would be unconstitutional. He would not be following the Constitution. Even if I was elected by 51% uh, and the other fellows got 49, it would be my duty to work for the areas where the 49 would not vote for me uh, uh, reside. On the question of his manifesto, the president told the people of Arua that he's going to implement all that he promised during the election, as has already been evidenced by the universal primary education program. He ever advised the people against living in squalid situation in this modern age. He also said that they should never shun anyone as long as it was paying them something. Uh, now, some of you may say, but the, the industries in Kampala uh, are not of interest to us. If we all became clerks and did not cut sugar cane, what, should we, what would we drink in our quete? Anyway, if you don't want to cut sugar cane, you leave it. I will mobilize people to cut it and they will be paid. Uh, then you go and compete to be an engineer. Who has stopped you? The, the, the visa is available. You, you go anywhere and you compete to be an engineer or, or a foreman or any other job you like. The, this is the third element of our modernization. Building many industries. On the side of agriculture, I'm glad the vice president was here. She must have talked with you on how to uh, expand extension and seed improvement and so on. I don't want to repeat that, but that is her job to encourage a modern agriculture. On the other problems which you talked about in your memorandum, like settling the displaced, uh, like abolishing the park fees, uh, all this will be addressed by the relevant uh, uh, ministries. Now, my secretary should ensure that the uh, concerned ministers uh, take action on each of these items. Some people are wondering why Kampala is growing so fast in terms of buildings. If you do research, you will find that many people who build in Kampala are not from Kampala. They are from, uh, from the rest of the country.
But they fear to build their houses in their villages because if they if you build a good house in some villages in Uganda, they will bewitch you for building a good house. You, you can now see, you can now see what it means when you have got somebody who knows how to dance and somebody who does not know how to dance. The ones who are not enlightened are retarding the progress of those who are enlightened. And that's what we want to cure by education. We want everybody to be educated. I don't want any Ugandan who is not educated. I would like the uneducated Ugandans to be extinct, to be the last. This generation of people who are not educated should be the last. We should have no more in the future. But explain that very well. They should not go on the same. Seven has said that we should kill everybody who is not educated. <laughs> explain it well. Like, like in my family, my father does not know how to write. He, he, he only scribbles his name. He does not know how to write uh, well. Uh, but I, I would like Mr. Kaguta to be the last person in my family who does not know how to write. All his, all his children and grandchildren must, must know how to read and write. This is what I mean by phasing out the, the Ugandans who are not literate. That's what I mean. But not, not killing the illiterate, because you were going to say, Museven has now declared war on the illiterate. <laughs> This time, do not lag behind. Should be strong and be in the forefront. Now, if you support NRM strongly, nobody will be a stronger member than you. In the, in the Bible, there is a parable of some workmen who, who started, the, somebody wanted to employ some, some people to work for him, and he went out at 9 o'clock and hired some people. Then he went back at midday and hired uh, another group of people. Because when it comes to the belief, to belief, the, the, you cannot say this is young in belief. This is old in belief. If I am more, I, I am more a kafiri, and I, I get baptized to join the Christian Church. I will be as an important Christian as the bishop himself here. <laughs> now, when we go to heaven, I don't think uh, uh, God will, will select between us that uh, this is the bishop and uh, he will take us all, as all his people. <laughs> And if you are, you, you become a Muslim, you will be as important to, before God as the, as the Sheikh. So join the movement and support the movement. I don't want anybody to, because the movement has proved that it is capable of defeating the dictatorship of bring about, of bring about a constitution, of repairing the economy, and of defending the constitutional order.
Commander, Senior Officer, Chef Ali. The 32nd NRM Victor Anniversary will be celebrated at Boma Grounds, Arua Municipality, on 26 January 2018, noting that Uganda's liberation struggle is a significant contribution to our present and future development. On January 26, 1986, the NRA fought its way into Kampala and the military junta fled. A new leader was sworn in as president. Nobody should think that what is happening today or what has, ha what has been happening in the last few days is a mere change of guards. This is not a mere change of guards. I think this is a fundamental change in the politics of our country. UBC's radio and TV network will broadcast the event live to you on 26 January 2018 from Arua. This.